Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at dependent drop down menus inside Livewire. This is something you guys have been requesting a lot in the comments. So let's take a look at today's demo. We are going to have two drop down menus. The first one is going to be the parent drop down, and then the second one is the child or the dependent drop down. So uh, if you take a look at the first one, it's basically like a company. So we have a bunch of companies. I just took them. Uh, from obviously the well-known companies so we have apple samsung nokia and i just put in xiaomi as well and then down there basically for the dependent one we have a list of products or maybe phones from that company right so right now since we don't have any company selected this phone list is going to be empty if i go ahead and i select apple now if we take a look at the phone drop down it has loaded iphone 5 6 7 ipad 2 iphone 4 ipad 4 and iphone x right i know these two are technically are not phones but basically a bunch of products that are depend or are from that company if i change from apple to let's say samsung we have s10 note 3 and you know whatever else right if we go to nokia same thing right and again if i go ahead and i for example select uh, e71 from nokia and then later on i decide to change my mind and go from nokia again back to apple it will go ahead and reset the phone drop down. So that's basically what we are going to build for today's episode, guys. If you also want, I will have the entire code in the description below. It's going to be GitHub gist. Now that we have covered that, let's go ahead and actually code it together. All right, guys. So I have gone ahead and reset the project back to its kind of template boilerplate code. As you can see, we have two drop down menus. Right now, there is zero functionality. So we just have two empty drop downs, basically just the HTML and CSS. So let's take a look at the code. Uh, we have an empty liver component at the moment for our PHP file. And then on the blade file, basically we have simple HTML. I have two selects with an empty default option, right? And I also have some simple uh, Tailwind CSS styling. This one is optional. You can even leave it empty. But if you guys do want, I will have the code in the description in a GitHub gist. So that's the front end. And then one more thing you guys need to be aware of is obviously we are going to have the company and the phone. So I'm loading those from the database. So we are going to have two separate models. The first one is the company model. So this is the migration for it. And you guys can type it in or either copy it from the link in the description. And the company basically has a name and a description, a very simple table. And then next up, we have another one, which is the kind of phone phones table or the phone model that depends on the company in the average dropdown menu. And this one also has a name and a description. But since we also have a relationship, we have this foreign ID four that basically is linking it to the company, right? And if you guys are not familiar with foreign ID four inside Laravel, all it does, it adds a foreign ID with the column name of whatever your model name is followed by underline ID. So in this case, my model name is company, then it is called company underline ID. So we are going to basically have two models, one company and then another one is phone. You can ignore the event and the user. These are basically the two ones that we need for this project. Okay, so now that I have covered the basics, let's go ahead and actually get into coding. So the first step for us guys is going to be to actually define our properties. So first we need two public properties to store the selected company, whatever we have selected and the selected phone. So let's go ahead and do that first. So again, depending on how many uh, drop downs you have, you are going to have a separate public property for every single drop down or form element that you have. So in this case, we have only two form elements. So I'm going to have two public properties. You can name these whatever you like. Maybe you can do, for example, a selected company. It's up to you guys. In this case, I'm going to name it a company ID. I don't want it to be too long. So I'll just use company ID. And then for the phone, I'll name it a phone ID. Okay. That's all we have to do. And the next step for us guys is to actually load the initial values for the company. Obviously for the phone, it is going to be empty by default. But for the companies, we do need to load the initial values. Now for this one, we can also go ahead and use a property. Now there are three options we have here. One of them is we can go ahead and use a public property. For example, we can name it uh, companies. I'm personally not a big fan of using this method. So then there are a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a bit harder to cache if you want to cache it. Second one, all public properties are obviously public, right? So they are visible from uh, by your front end user. So generally, if you have a list or a collection of sorts, 
there might be some sensitive information there that you don't want to be public. So you do need to be aware of that. I just don't want to think about it. So I generally prefer to either pass it in from the render method or use a uh, computer properties. Again, you can still use it. And then the second drawback with public properties, if you want to add a collection is it's a bit harder if you want to add pagination. By default, uh, Liver does not support that type. So I personally prefer to pass it in either through the render method or use a computed property. And that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to use computed properties here. So let's go ahead and define a computer property, computed property. Uh, I'll name it uh, companies. And I do have a separate video on computed properties if you guys are not familiar with it, with them. So we need to go ahead and add an attribute of computed. This one is provided by LiveWire. And this basically will go ahead and convert this into a computer property. Okay, and let me show you guys the import as well. LiveWire attributes computed. All right, now we can go ahead and return all the, com the kind of initial values of the companies. So in my case, I'll just load all the companies. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do company model. Let me import it all now in an actual application or your application maybe you want to check all the active companies or maybe you want to have some sort of condition here in this case we are loading all of them uh, if you have a very large table you obviously probably want to have some sort of limit as well maybe uh, only load let's say 5 or 10 or 20 or something like that in this case i know it's going to be a limited number so i'll just load all of them from the database and that's all we have to do okay so let's go back and now we can go ahead and actually use both this company ID as well as this company's uh, computed property. So first step, I'll go ahead and add a wire model. And I'll set this to company ID. We don't need to later on make this live, but I'll explain why in a second. And last, we also need to go ahead and add or loop here and display all the values of the companies we have. So I'll go ahead and use a for each loop. And since we are using a computed property, we need to do this companies. So that's kind of the way to differentiate computed properties from regular properties. And I'll have this be company. And now we can basically add an option for every single company we have from our database. So the name is going to be the company name. So I'll do company name. And let me show you guys the migration again. So you guys can kind of see uh, on the company's uh, migration we had a name so i'm basically using that as the name and i'm going to use the id as a kind of a unique identifier and for the value again we are going to use the company id and this is also going to again match the computed property we have sorry the regular property we have of comp company id all right so that's the first step guys now what we do want to do is Let's go back and just test it out. As you can see, we have Apple, Samsung, Nokia, so it is working. But one thing we do want, guys, is whenever we change the value of this from, let's say, the MT1 to Apple, we want to send the request to our backend, and then we want to load all the phones that are, for example, from Xiaomi or maybe from Apple. Right now, if we take a look at our developer mode, developer console, if you open it, open it up and take a look at under a network, if I go ahead and I change the value from Apple to something else, there is no network request sent. So in order to do that, we need to go ahead and convert our wire model to wire model dot live. So this is very important. Uh, this is something that's different from live wire two. So if you are seeing some code from live wire two, they are generally going to be wire model, but in live wire three, it's kind of flipped. By default, it, it's not live. And if you want to make it live, you have to add dot live. So it's something to be aware of if you are looking some tutorials for uh, live wire two. Okay, so now that we have done that, if I reload and we do the exact same thing again, if I select Apple, as you can see, we are now sending server requests or Ajax requests, right? So now we know that this value got updated. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and actually use it to load our phones. So for the phones, I'm also going to use a computed property here. And obviously we need to change the method name to something else. I'll use phones. And since we now are updating our uh, company ID value live, we can actually use it inside our method here. So in this case, I can load the phone model and we can add a ver query here and basically just check for the company ID, right? So we can say company ID is equal to this dot company ID. And again, because I'm zoomed in, it's a bit hard to see everything in the same frame, but we're basically checking, hey, give me all the phones that are basically matching or match our selected company ID. And we can take a look at the migration as well, guys. Again, 
uh, we had this foreign ID here. So in your application, obviously, you're going to have a different model and a different uh, key or column name here. So you need to change that to match your application. And the last but not least, we can just go ahead and get them here, right? If you want to add any additional checks or queries, you can add that, maybe get all the active phones or maybe check if the company is null or not. In this case, it won't matter if it is null or an invalid ID. It will just return an empty collection. So we don't need to worry about it that much. But if you want, you can add some additional error checking as well if you need it. So now that we have this, guys, we can go ahead and use it inside our blade file. I'll just copy the existing for each loop we have and I'll just paste it here. And we just need to go ahead and change these companies to phones over here. Okay, so I'll just copy it from here so we don't need to type anything in. This one becomes phones. And then for this one, I'll name this to phone. And by the way, this is actually a typo. This should be company ID. I'm sure someone was screaming at the screen. It should be company ID. So this one also needs to be a phone ID and this one needs to be phone name. And that is it guys, that's pretty much it. Last step, we also need to go ahead and add this wire model to our phone dropdown. So I'll just come over here. It is going to be wire model uh, this one doesn't need to be live because we don't have anything depending on our phone dropdown. But if you did have multiple, let's say three dropdowns and your last dropdown menu dependent on the second one, you do need to make sure the second one is live. In this case, I'll just leave it be live. I generally don't worry if the, don't care if the like dropdown menus are live. It's not that big of a deal, but still, if you want, you can go ahead and make this one be obviously offline or not be live. Okay. And this company ID need to be phone ID. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. Let's save this and let's go ahead and test it out. See if it works. If we have any mistakes, we'll come back and fix them. So I'll do a quick reload. Obviously, we don't have any phones here. So I'll go ahead and select Apple. Now, if you go over the phone dropdown, as you guys can see, we have all the way from iPhone 5, a bunch of random phones that I just added in the database. If we switch to Samsung, again, we get Samsung phones. If we switch to Nokia, we get a bunch of random Nokia phones that I remembered. And then uh, last but not least, let's also try actually selecting a phone. So if I go ahead and I select iPad 2, as you guys can see, uh, everything is also working. Now we do have an issue here. If I go ahead and change from Apple to, let's say Nokia, it automatically selected, you know, 1100 or 1100, right? This is technically an issue. Generally what you want in these cases is you want the kind of child dropdown to reset, right? So since I had, I believe I had selected iPad 2, iPad 2 is the fourth option here, as you guys can see. If I go to Nokia, it has also selected the fourth option, right? So we need to go ahead and reset this. So how can we go ahead and do that? We can go ahead and use lifecycle hooks inside LiveWire to achieve this. So basically a lifecycle hook is going to give us a callback whenever this category ID changes. And if we notice a change, we are going to reset the value back to select phone. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So in order to add a lifecycle hooks for our company ID, all we have to do is we need to go ahead on our component. Let me do it over here so you guys can see a bit better. We need to go ahead and add a method of updated followed by our property name. So in this case, it's company ID. Uh, let me remove the dollar sign. Now this does use camel case, so the C needs to be capital. But basically we need to add a method like this, updated followed by the property name. And this also needs to be a function, obviously. And this will go ahead and call this method whenever this company ID changes. So if I go ahead and I add a dump, let's say we say hi, we can just test it out and see that it actually does work. So if I change the value from Samsung to Apple, we get a hi, okay? So that's basically how it works. It calls this method whenever company ID changes. So in our case, what we wanted was when we change the company ID, we want to reset this phone, selected phone. So and obviously the selected phone is linked to this phone ID property. So super simple for us. We can just say this dot phone ID is equal to null, right? You can also use this dot reset. It's up to you guys, whichever you use. I'll just basically manually set it to, uh, to null, right? Or maybe you have like a default value. We set it to whatever you have, okay? Uh, in our case, we just set it to null. And that's all we have to do, guys. So let's go ahead and test it out. Right now I do reload, obviously, None of them have any options. I select Apple and we, re we do the exact same thing. I'm going to select iPad 2. Now, previously when I changed Nokia, I believe it was the 1100, Nokia 1100 or 1100. I'm not sure what it's called actually. 
if I click Nokia now, it is back to basically select phone. All right, so it's back to its default value. So that's the process, guys. Relatively easy to do. I know the video is almost 15 minutes long, but basically you need two public properties for the selected items. And then you can use uh, computer properties to actually load the values for your options. And if you want optionally, you can add a lifecycle hood to reset your dependent uh, drop down when the value of the parent changes. Or you want to add any additional logic you want, you can also go ahead and do it over here. Now, I do like to show you guys, uh, in case you do not want to use public prop, sorry, computed properties, you can also pass it in from the render. It's going to be relatively easy to do. Basically, we can move this logic from inside our computer properties down to over here. Now, one advantage of computer properties, guys, is you can actually make it a bit easier to do uh, caching. Okay, so you can go ahead and use the built-in live wire caching utilities uh, for that one. So I do prefer it myself. But again, if you don't want that, you can go ahead and pass it in from the render method as well. Uh, very easy to use. It's kind of similar to how you would do it inside li a lot of controllers. So I'll just use the array method. I'll pass it an array. And the first one, we are going to name it be uh, companies. Exact same name as our method here, actually. And the value is going to be also exactly the same. Okay. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the phone as well. Uh, I'll just copy it from here. And that's pretty much it. So this does the exact same job as our computer properties. We just don't have access to the default kind of the, you know, extra caching utilities that library provides. So if you do want to use the caching features, I recommend you guys use compute it. But again, you could maybe have your own uh, caching layer so you don't need to use it. And then inside our blade file, obviously, since we are no longer using computer properties, we need to go ahead and remove this. Uh, I'll do it over here. Of course, we are using the exact same names, so I'm not changing the property names or the variable names. So we are using companies and phones. And technically, I could go ahead and remove this as well. For now, just comment it. Okay, let's do a reload. And as you guys can see, it still works. Okay, so if I go, as you can see, we have Nokia N95. I'll go to Xiaomi. It got reset. We have, I don't know, Mi 4. Basically, it works exactly like before. So you can either use a render, pass it in from render, or use computer properties. You can also use public properties. But personally, guys, I don't recommend that. It's a lot easier to actually use this method. With public properties, you need to go ahead and actually update the values every time something changes. This way, it just automatically changes, and it's also a bit more uh, robust. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video if you learned something new, and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. And if you have any live wire video idea suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to make a video if I'm already familiar with the topic or it is something that I believe, you know, I think other people will also enjoy. And if you like someone's idea, make sure you leave a comment or like the comment and let me know so I know it's something that actually multiple people are interested in. So that's it guys for today's episode and I see you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.